And welcome to the PBO Week 3 Pick'ems. My name is Aiden, also the coach of the St. Louis Ogalias. I am here with Orange. Ah. Uh. And Alabama. Hey. And sorry for a little bit of late upload. Pretty busy this week. But let's get into Palos. Up first is the Indianapolis Incinerors versus the Detroit Zoroarks. I'm going to let you guys start this off. All right, I'll go. Um, so I picked Indianapolis. Uh, I know Day a little bit more as a battler, and I do think he's pretty good. I think uh, Torn looks pretty good in this matchup, and um, I'm liking the way Clefable looks as well to kind of wall a good amount of the team. Sneezler looks a little dangerous for sure, but I kind of like Day's uh, ability to be more defensive and sustained compared to what Detroit's probably going to have to do, which is be a little bit more offensive. I think Day will be able to play around that because the setup on Detroit's side really, uh, I don't think it'll work out. Like Blastoise, if it wants to shell smash, Crocolores unaware will be there. I think Crocolores is a pretty big issue. So I'm going to give it to Day because of his more defensive backbone. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and say Hearthflame go burr. Uh, really nothing that answers Hearthflame uh, the long term. Not really. And, uh, I just think that Day has all the answers in the world to pretty much anything Detroit can throw out. It's just a matter of what gets brought and what doesn't. And overall, matchups in favor of, of Day, and I really think that this Ogre Pawn is going to absolutely just fuck. Yeah, I mean, when you have a, when you have a team that can uh, just be wall on top of wall on top of wall... Uh, into a team that doesn't really have that same luxury or um, even necessarily power to break through everything um, that they have. It's a lot easier for Day to play the game, uh, especially with Hearthflame just being able to go burr uh, definitely in Day's favor. I didn't give it quite as big of an advantage in um, Day's favor just because I've seen Bumble, who we thought um, was with this team, wasn't going to be super great but came out and has surprised me a lot uh with their play so i'm giving it uh 60 40 in favor of indianapolis and on to the ottawa dawn fans versus the boston bayonets so first off looking at this walking wake and rain against a chi yu uh just does not favor boston as well as they haven't uh really been playing their best um I uh, had heard that Raven was, um, uh, I heard that they were uh, decent, but so far they haven't shown that yet, so I'm going to hand that off to Ab uh, Alabama and Orange. Alright, so uh, I kind of like the way Ottawa's been playing so far this season, he's impressed me. I think the uh, the Bear Tick uh, plays were pretty good last week, if I remember correctly. I think uh, Umbreon looks pretty dangerous in this match. It Spadef Umbreon can kind of wall a good amount of the opponent's team. Toxics can come out and be pretty dangerous. Uh, Ursa Luna looks decently dangerous uh, for uh, Ottawa to have to go up against, but you know, a defensive Pelipper could probably handle it pretty decently. And uh, Chiyu, you know, between Slowking and Umbreon, this team probably has, I mean, there's not really Chiyu answers, quote unquote. So this team probably has the best, like if you're gonna get the play right, uh, you can go into something that takes a GU hit pretty well. And then uh, Walking Wake, for sure, pretty dangerous. Don Dozo's the water type. I don't know if Don Dozo wants to take, you know, in the rain, a choice specs uh, or a protosynthesis boosted uh, uh, move, like a Draco, or in the rain, a uh, Hydro Steam, anything like that. So I, I gave it to Ottawa overall. I think his play has been pretty good so far this season. Well, uh, I know this is off topic as fuck, but if you look at Aiden's prediction on the top uh, bottom left, it's 65-45. He is 110% sure that someone is going to win this game. Uh, <laughs> taking away from Aiden's math mistake, uh, this is Ottawa's game to win, I think, because w uh, rain, walking wake, big, scary. If webs go up, however, I think the game is going to be very much in favor of Raven. I think you're one of the better teams to take on a Chi Yu, and I think Ursaluna is going to be way too slow for this game. Well, I, I think if it comes down to it, and Ursaluna versus a Walking Wake, I mean, that's a 1v1 matchup. But if it comes down to the Ursaluna, not in Trick Room, and, you know, the Walking Wake is what's left, you know, 
Walking Wake is going to have very, 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 very free dual stabs to click into this team. And I also think that having access to Gudra, even Carvink, for Chiyu answers, you have so many good answers to the top tier threats. I think maybe the Revan Room is going to be slept on a little bit, but if you keep the Don Fen healthy, you're in a good spot. I think Wo Chen could definitely come to this game and do some damage if Zapdos and Robombi are taking more of a backseat. Uh, but overall, I, I think this is Ottawa's game to win. All right. And on to the next one. It is the Gross Morn Growlis versus the Toronto Star Raptors, our first PBO game of the week. Um, and Gross Morn took the dub last week. I sacked off Dio Speed, but besides the point, uh, looking at this Gouging Fire, Ogre Pond, obviously Ninetales screens uh, for any of the offensive threats on this team are uh, very, very scary. But as well as Toronto having Valiant, Latios, Gliscor, uh, Suicune is definitely going to be very, very tough for uh, Grossmorn to break through. Um, and with Valiant having the option to be a special, physical, um, just the versatility of it and uh, the versatility of the rest of the team, I think is going to um, definitely help Toronto. But overall, I did give it to um, Grossmorn just because I think that their team is a little bit better and that they can play around it a little bit better um than toronto all right uh i'll go next so i actually gave this one to toronto uh i do believe in toronto as a player i think he's pretty good and uh i think Gliscor uh is one of the better gouging fire answers in my opinion it can kind of toxic it and uh do some stuff that makes uh gouging fire kind of recede a little bit I think uh, Iron Valiant can be pretty good in this game. It also uh, a little bit of an underrated one, Knackle Stack. Uh, I, it says it's Terra here. I don't really know if it's actually Terra. I think it is. I think Knackle Stack, if it's Terra, is pretty devastating in this game for uh, Grossmorn. I think uh, Salt Cure is coming off. He's going to need to have uh, a Pokemon that's like a dedicated answer to Knackle Stack, or else he's going to be in a Knackle Stack issue, in my opinion. Uh, the three the three beasts, Suicune, Entei, Raikou, all look decent. I think Entei is actually probably the one that I like the most. I like Extreme Speed, maybe Choice Band Entei here. I think that could be very, very dangerous because he doesn't actually have like a reliable switching uh, to the fire move other than Gouging Fire. But uh, if uh, you catch the Gouging Fire, who's probably going to want to be a sweeper with uh, a Stomping, for example, that could be pretty devastating to Gross Morn. So I don't know if you want to make Gouging such an important member of your team, the answer to Ente. Well, I'm going to take a different route, which is I think Hoopa U on B side, on Grossmore's side, is absolutely devastating because you do not want to swap in your Valiant to a Choice Band Hyperspace Fury. And I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say I think Gouging Fire as well looks absolutely devastating, as well as the Ogre Pawn if you're able to get it in the right position. I think it's about not losing to the Valiant in the end game. And it's about positioning yourself well. Uh, I, I don't really think that, you know, this is callous at the end of the day. No one's going to play perfect. But, I mean, this is, this definitely has Toronto's, like, matchup. I think Valiant, you know, there you have a check to Valiant in Golden Go, which is rare. But, you know, that happens. Uh, Valiant can't win every game on its own. Uh, just 90% of them. And, uh, really, I think this is Toronto's matchup. I think they're here to win it but if anyone can cause an upset it would be b so i'm actually gonna go ahead and be the wild card and say b wins this one by surprise just because matchups in their favor all oh. right on to the next one is my game versus the teddy ursus and as to avoid bias bin and orange take it away all right uh i'm gonna go with teddy ursa i think i think i said this last week but i'll say it again because he keeps winning i think he's the only 2-0 coach now uh technically by technicality uh i think he has an insanely nasty team uh the way you beat him hazards i imagine he doesn't actually have hazard control which is pretty crazy for a team to be you know winning and considered really good without any hazard control but uh i think um just the pokemon themselves like Chi, Chiam Pao, Annihilate, Dragonite, Iron Moth, Metagross, Primarina, those top six. And then having Electro Hisui, one of the premier uh, Terra captains, as one of your options. I think it's a pretty nuts team. 
So, uh, but I did only go 40, uh, 60. I only went 60 in his favor uh, because I do believe that uh, the Solgaleos have a few things going for them. Uh, in particular, um, I think Quick Quavel with the right set can be pretty good this game. I think Quick Quavel is uh, pretty nasty. Primarina is uh, the answer, but a uh, flip turn Quick Quavel can gain a lot of momentum. And um, I think uh, there's a few things on uh, Solgaleos side, such as perhaps a spikes overquill, some sort of hazard setting overquill that could cause uh, Tokyo a lot of issues. Although Tokyo does have Chiam Pao, who, you know, an ice shard Chiam Pao, like bandage, something like that, that kind of looks crazy here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that I did not have much faith in, in the Sogaleos this week. Um, basically, Chin Pao go burn. Um, it's very hard for me to say, you know, that that Chin Pao is very easy for, for Aiden to switch into. And I think while Psy Spam and Psychic Terrain, you know, I think that's very valid here because the Chin Pao is frail as fuck. And then your Psychic Resist is a Probopass, which I have never been high on. And then Metagross, mm -hmm. which, you know, combines your Steel and your Psychic together. So essentially you're running probably a move to hit Probopass and Metagross in one, something to hit Chin Pao, and then Spam Psychic on the rest of the team. Uh, I have a feeling that Tokyo is going to surprise us with some prep here. Um, I don't really have anything, you know, I don't really have any like sets it in mind but i think that tokyo is good enough to use lures and uh understand that speed control is definitely going to not be in his favor and i think that if anyone is able to prep his way out of this it's tokyo so and he's already gone on to a good start i don't think that will change much all right and after my team is done getting shit on by everybody on to the Koborka Gengars versus the Philadelphia Flygons. Um, looking at this matchup, the Flygons took a bad loss last week to the previously mentioned uh, Teddy Ursa's Chin Pao, swept their team. Um, and coming to this game, I think they're going to be looking for revenge. Um, and looking at the opponent's team, uh, Philadelphia definitely looks like they have the uh, team advantage. I think they are the better player. Um, Borker coming off a few, I think he might have won last week, um, but it was not very convincing. I believe it was only 1-0, and after getting swept week one, um, I think that Philadelphia should be able to pretty easily take this with Blood Moon, Cinderace, um, Scizor Thunderous for speed control, having the Wall of Vaporeon, Pivot of Gligar, um, I think it's definitely in Philadelphia's favor. Yeah, I think this is slightly in Philly's favor as well. Um, I like Blood Moon this game. Blood Moon looks pretty devastating into this team. Um, I like, uh, probably like a Levitate Weezing, maybe. Um, I do think Vaporeon is probably a good bringing as well, maybe. Uh, I like the Cohesion on Philadelphia's side as well. And from what I've seen from the play, these are two probably the two players I know the least about, maybe. From what I've seen from play, Flygon seems uh, pretty good. He knows what he's doing. So uh, just based on the, the top few guys and Blood Moon in particular, I think looking pretty decent, I'm going to give it to the Flygons. Although, you know, Kaborka does have a few defensive answers, such as Milotic and um, maybe Florgus as well. He's got like a, a Wish Florgus. His sustainability is decent, but uh, Fly, uh, Flygons can run Wish on Vaporeon for some sustainability too. Well, you mentioned sustainability. I don't think this is a game you want to play defensively at all. And you may have to because the sand matchup, and this is the problem with drafting sand, is you get the matchups that are free wins. And then you get matchups like this, where you're playing extra drill into Gligar, Weezing G, Thunderous, and then possibly Fizz Death Vaporeon. You have, you know, Prankster Wisp to worry about with Sableye. And it's just not pretty, because that's your top threat, and there are a lot of answers to that top threat in Excadrill and Sam. With, and I, I have no faith in the Houndstone either to do anything, because its main ghost stab doesn't exist. Or, well, it does exist, it's Poltergeist. But you have our Stone Blood Moon, one of the best normals in the game, and Cyclozar. There's just not much for Kaborka to work with here. Even on the offensive or defensive spectrum, you're going to be relying a lot on maybe an offensive Forges, but you're doing that into a Scissor. Gengar doesn't even look that scary because of Blood Moon. I mean, Mandibuzz, again, Thunderous. You, 
thunderous wheezing. Even in hell, hell, the Blood Moon beats the Mana Buzz. The Milotic I use as a, as a Blood Moon check, but it needs to check Scissor here. It needs to check Vaporeon here. The Azel can definitely get up to some nasty tricks, and the T Tower just doesn't look good. The prep is all in the favor of the Flygons here, and I think that's going to that's going to show really hard. Because without the sand and without that X factor, without this drill, you know, doing anything, it's just not not in Kaborka's favor. Alright. And with that, we move on to our next game of the week. We last one in Kalos. Game of the week. Tottenham versus Glamorgan. Orange, start us off with this one. Championship rematch. I think this is really, really cool. Uh, on the flip side, I don't think this is going to be as cool as everyone thinks it is because Glamorgan is going to wipe the floor with the Hood Hoods. You heard it here first. I don't really think that... Uh, well, Tottenham's definitely had some consistency issues this season, and I think Glamorgan's just going to beat him outright in, in play. I think that Glamorgan is an incredible player. I don't think he should be down here in Kalos. I think he should be up here in Unova. And I think if there's a game for him to prove it, it's this one. The guy clearly knows what he's doing. He's taken the championship core that beat him last year, and he's just improved it and put his own spin on it. And it has done him wonders. Uh, you're just looking at the entire team. The Confe looks like it is going to claim lives if Bronzong and Claude Sire are chipped. Uh, the screens, the screens from the Hoot Hoots, they just don't really match up well into the, the Treads and the Greninja and the Bolt. There are a lot of options here, and I feel like the Great Tusks have an advantage in the builder here, whereas Tottenham's team is all over the place, right? There's screens, there's slower pace, there's a slower paced version of the team, there's a faster pace that wants to play more offensive, and I just think the Great Tusks have much more versatility and options to work with. It feels like Tottenham is having, is fighting an uphill battle, essentially. Um, Alright, Alabama? Yeah, so I agree in concept, yeah, Glamour, uh, pretty much with what you said, I think Glamorgan's probably, even though he lost the championship slightly better, or uh, yeah, he, I think he's better. And then I think his team uh, composition is kind of like meshing more. Treads, Galar, Greninja is just, it's a really nice combo. He's got really nice pivoting. He's got better uh, hazard control, I'd say. I think Raging Bolt looks okay this game. I think the one thing going for Tottenham, Claude Zire, uh kind of goes crazy. Claude Zire, like uh kind of matches up pretty well against, like if it's like Water Absorb, it can kind of deal with Gren, it can kind of deal with Bolt as well uh it can uh, deal with slow king like all his major threats glamorgans can like not necessarily get 1v1 but like claude sire can kind of like soft check all of them in some way so i feel like it will get overwhelmed is yeah the problem. The, yeah the issue is claude sire can't do everything right it's, in, in, it's literally the only thing for some for some of the options here. yeah like the confe like the bronze dog is getting permanent damage off you know it's yeah. not gonna get grassy train recovery if it's levitate you're relying yeah. on leftovers it's Claude just Zyre, not. Claude not Zyre is really spot. good in this matchup. It's just alone. Like it's probably going to be water absorbed, so it's going to wall road him. I imagine it's going it, to. It, it's going to be good, but it just has to do a lot. And I don't think you can be cute with it. Like I don't think you can sacrifice Claude Zyre again because uh, it's probably like your key component this week. And I think if Claude Zyre goes down, all of a sudden Raging Bolt is looking really, really scary. And you know the likes of Comfe, uh is coming and. It's, it can, like, you know, set up Leech Seeds for support, or maybe it could even be set up with Draining Kiss. Uh, if Bronzong, like you said, if Bronzong's Chip Comfey kind of is a, a very, very dangerous position for the opponent. Um, and I think Kamo'o can also be a Pokemon that does something here with, uh, you know, maybe a D-Dance set, so it can start outspeeding Dragapult. It can do a lot of damage to everything, again, so long as Claude Zire is chipped or dead. So, really, uh... There's one pillar holding up Tonehem, in my opinion. It's Claude Zyre, and as long as Glamorgan keeps beating at that pillar, it'll eventually crack and fall. That's uh, my opinion on the matchup. Well, if we see what if we see Claude Zyre do what it did against Tokyo, then uh, well, there goes that pillar. It's fallen down. I think Prep is definitely in Glamorgan's favor, and uh, instead of Tottenham, so on. With that, move to Memphis versus Norwalk. Alabama starts off. All right, I'll start us. Um, I'm going with. Norwalk here. From what I've seen from the Mad Cargos, um, like play-wise, I haven't been super duper impressed at times. 
I think Kyurem, like Freeze Dry Kyurem, looks kind of insane this game. Like, uh, Specs or Scarf. He doesn't really have a switch in. The Earth Powers are going to be... Because you just basically need Freeze Dry and Earth Power, and you're going insane. Probably two-shotting everything. Maybe not Screamtail, if Screamtail's Spideff. But um, Ice Beam might still two-shot two it if you're Specs. Uh, so he doesn't actually have, like, a real Curamancer, which is kind of, you know, a tough situation to be in. He might need to run, like, AV, uh, Rachi or, like, Shukarachi or something like that. I don't know. And I think, uh, Great Tusk also looks pretty good this game. Um, again, it can probably, like, uh, beat the top four guys as long as Bax doesn't have a, uh, a, uh, Dragon Dance up. Uh, I do think Bax looks really, really good this game, but of course there is Dirge, whom I, I'm imagining lives uh, one, but uh, Dirge can't Will-O-Wisp Bax because it's going to have the ability. Uh, so, it can't really do much Bax. So Bax does actually look pretty good this game, in my opinion. Uh, Sylveon might have to be like Fizz Def. I think there's a pretty decent chance for Bax to sweep. So, kind of offensive threats on both sides. Both their drags and ices don't really have answers on either side. I am going to go slightly in Norwalk Shaver because I like his chances of... He doesn't really have to set up with Gyrim to win. I think he can just be Specs. And I like the hazards that you know, Glamora can help Gyrim with as well. All right. Well, I haven't been thrilled with Memphis' play as of late. I am going to say that Bexcalibur is a branded Pokemon and uh, definitely has a great matchup here because that Skeletor, like you said, cannot whisk it back. It cannot stop this thing once it gets rolling. If that Skeletor even takes a slight amount of damage, Earthquake, Glaive Rush... Look at look at ice move, earthquake, and glaive rush. What's the switch in? Nothing. And I, I really don't think that's going to change. The Kiram switch in is Screamtail or Spadef Jirachi. I don't think that's going to change. Look at the Spectre switching. It is just Jugula. Sylveon might count initially, but you can set up all over that if you're if you're crazy enough. And Jugulus loses to the Draining Kiss set. Why are you not bringing Calm Mind Spectre here? Force out the boulder, and then you have switch-ins to the boulder. So, I'm going to say this is 100% in Memphis's favor. He's just got to play it right. And he's just got to play it using some brain cells. Look at the Hisuian Arcanine. There might be a boulder there and a tusk there. But tusk is not going to eat a band of flare blitz. It's, nothing on this team wants to take a head smash or a flare blitz to the face. This boulder, it has to come in and revenge so much. And you have great responses to the boulder. The Jirachi, the Screamtail, the Quag. Hell, even the Bramble Gas can do it if it wants to. I 100% agree. And you see how the matchup isn't in Memphis's favor. He's just got to yeah. put two and two together. Matchup is for sure in Memphis's favor. And I, I really hope that he's going to be able to put it all together prep-wise, play-wise, and everything like that. So that's why I have it in Memphis's favor. Sounds like Orange does. Alabama taking Norwalk. And now, moving on to Unova. First game of the week is the New York Malamars versus the Jersey Dracos. And I don't really think there's much that I have to say about this matchup. Uh, Malamars, the best team in Unova right now, have the best put together team. Um, they have been destroying their opponents. And unfortunately for Jersey, I don't think that they take this week off either. I think they will be able to just with the right prep be able to quickly wipe through jersey's team as i there aren't many answers for all of what new york has um and i just don't see it being very easy for jersey at all all right yeah so i have it in malabar's favor as well i think you know valiant can go kind of crazy this game uh scissor looks decent except he trends here so that's unfortunate um i will say like it, it's a uh, not like I'm not going to talk too much about all the things Melmar has going for them because um, I think it's pretty obvious that his team is kind of nutty and it's very difficult to play against and uh, he can kind of just overwhelm with offensive pressure and pivoting. I do think Reggie Alecki has to come this week uh, because Glamora is on the other side and Draco's uh, can hazard stack and because of that I think maybe planning around how you're going to deal with Regieleki, like maybe Garchomp could, uh, because let's say you get up hazards with Glamora or something, and then Garchomp comes in on the rapid spins, and you're like just 
over and over again, getting continuous chip on Aleki and then just uh, trying to apply pressure that way. I think there's some sort of path there. That's probably the Draco's only path, really, that I can see. I think Heatran looks really good this game. I think Primarina is pretty solid this game. Can come in and start calm minding on Slow King, maybe. Can, uh, you know, deal with Darkrai if it has to. Uh, Lando, the Intimidate, pretty devastating for Heartflame and Scizor. Uh, Slow King Galar, if it comes. Uh, it's not a great matchup for Slow King Galar, but it can deal with some of, like, Sylveon, for example. And Glamora, because Earth Power probably doesn't do enough. So, still in Malamar's favor. I'm just trying to outline a way Dracos could possibly win. Why I have it? It is it. very, very hard for me to look at this matchup because I like Crook like a brother, man. This being said, man, it is not in your favor. Um, it's just so hard to argue that Crook can win this game at all because you just look at Valiant Backscalibur and Heatran, and go, how in the hell do you even break those three, let alone the rest? It's just, it's always going to be an uphill battle, and I think the best way you can actually get through this is you get chip on Incineroar and Heatran, and then a little bit of chip on everything else, and you just put everything in range of Scissor, is what you need to do. Now, I don't even know if you can get there, because, in all truth, Fuck if I know. Valiant is going to just have a field day with his entire team. With its dual stabs alone. It doesn't need anything else. The speed matchup will, will always be in the Malamar's favor because of Aleki. So Aleki is always going first. The Garchomp must come in on it. There's no other good electric resist here besides Cyclozar, which is just going to get both switched on. So maybe Hearthflame can come out and do some, some magic. Or the Malamars can blunder and prep severely. Maybe Hearthflame can, can come out here and do some magic with Trailblaze and Swords Dance, but it's just not looking likely. Um, you just need so much to go your way, and it's just... I would not want to be in, in Crook's position right now, because, oh my god. I don't think anyone this wants to be the, the team terrifying. facing the Malamars. No one wants to face this team this season. And will Jersey find a way? Who knows? On to the next one is the Virginia Zekroms versus the Charleston Chestnuts. I want to start us off. Well, Virginia, my friends, you've stopped throwing out your Chin Pals into Banded Landers few turns, and you've won over a uh, mug last week. I think you just need to carry that momentum, because dear lord, Chin Pal. <laughs> There's a Deancey to Wallet, and maybe you can do some funny things with Ice Q, but I really don't think this is in Charleston's favor. I know that, that, you know, everyone has voted in favor of Charleston at the moment, as you can see the predictions, 40-60 and 45-55. Uh, no, this is Ting Lu, this is Shin Pao. I, I do not think this is Charleston's game. I, I think he's already shown he cannot play defensively, and he must take initiative with this game. The Blood Moon has a terrible matchup, an absolutely terrible matchup into the Shaman, the Chin Pao. The Cinderace can do a ton of damage to it. The Empoleon can run Air Balloon for it. The Sneasler has a lot of checks. Uh, by that, I mean Okie Doki, and that's about it. Uh, but that's all you really need. You know, throw a rocket on a thing called um, Not really. I, I think Fix's prep is a lot better than Charleston's this week. I think he'll have an easier time. Um, not really sure where the Tatsugiri might fit in here. I know it does fit in here decently well with dual stabs. Um, I don't know if it actually makes its way out of the team, but it's a possibility. Um, I think Articuno can clean up this game as well if things aren't positioned well. I think, I honestly think you hazard stack with Ting Lu and you just win the game with Jin Pao. There's really nothing more to say. Yeah, um, I did give this slightly to Chesnots. Uh, I think it's, uh... In particular, I think Jianpao is difficult. I think uh, Articuno Galar is very, very difficult for Chesnots. Uh, if, if a Terra Fairies and, like, is Agility Calm Mind stored power, or, like, if it's Agility Calm Mind uh, Terra Fairy, I think that's pretty devastating for uh, Charleston. But I do think Sneasler actually does have, a, 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 like, I'll disagree that it has many checks. I think it has a pretty good matchup here. It, uh, if it gets its uh, the terrain boost or whatever, and it has acrobatics, 
Uh, it kills everything. I don't think there's a thing that it doesn't kill. Uh, it, Tinglu needs to be at 70%, I think, because close combat doesn't actually kill Tinglu. But if it has, like, the boost, and, like, if it has the burden boost, it outspeeds and one-shots everything. It, it, Thunderous would need Thunder Wave to save him. I, other than that, everything, and Okie Dogi would probably need to be at, like, what, 70% for Acro to kill? 60%, depending on his investment. But I think Sneasler uh, is actually really, really good in this match. That's why I kind of slightly gave it in Charleston's favor. I really like Sneasler here. Um... I think, you know, Chiampao, pretty devastating in this game. Uh, Cobalion, Fizdef Cobalion uh, could be a thing, but Sacred Sword obviously uh, could come out. So I think Diancy probably shows up, like you said. And if it's Max Fizdef, it probably comes in a few times. I want to say twice. Um, depends on the Chiampao set. If it's Chiampao's banded, then you can obviously, you know, switch around a little bit. If it's a uh, Swords Dance, then it needs to set up the Nance to... So you come in, and then he needs to set up the dance, and then uh, it can be kind of dangerous for him. So uh, I don't know if Chen Pao's like necessarily going to sweep or not. I do think Virginia has you know a few things going for him. That's why I, I made this one so close. But I am slightly going to give it to Charleston, uh, mainly because of Sneasler. And I think Charleston Ursula... must take initiative with the offense if he is going to win this game. I think Diancy yeah. under Trick Room. Oh, I think Trick Room in general could actually be a really good idea. But all right, fuck it. And with that, the Zekroms and the Chestnuts moving on to my co host's game, which happens to be the game of the week the Frederick Klefkies versus the Alabama Alakazams. And seeing as I'm the only one who's not participating in this match, I'll go ahead and take this one. So, looking at it, um, Great Tusk, Dio Speed, Torn T, uh, Melodic, definitely a lot of, um, defensive answers um some offensive answers as well uh, uh with the do speed ogre pawn um heck even maybe potentially toxicity having crocklore and uxie there to take hits um is definitely going to um potentially play a factor in some prep uh but obviously the, we're looking at tusk we're looking at do speed we're looking at Ogre Pump, we're looking at Torn Those are probably the main ways that this game's going to have to go for the Clef Keys. Um, because Chiyu, Quavo, and Weavile um, all are very, very threatening. Even Jirachi um, and Volby being there, um, having Prankster being able to mess some things up uh, if they're not careful. Um, but yeah, overall, I think that the matchup is ever so slightly in Klefki's favor um players are very very good in this matchup and so that's why i only gave it 55 45 uh, in flavor of Clef in favor of Klefki's. um but it's going to be a very very exciting game to watch for sure and with that we move on to our next one which is the worcester whoopers versus the pittsburgh pittsburgh scissors orange takes away uh, isn't it Kingston Marshadows? Sorry. It is. It is Kingston Marshadows. Idol is wrong. Doc well, errors happen. I, anyway. for one, very much like the idea of this um, game. Uh, I totally haven't seen this or know how this ends. So I'm going to go ahead and say Kingston wins this one. Yeah, I think... No, uh, no context needed. I think on paper, Kingston is okay here. I think Dragapult looks pretty good. Um, I think Corviknight has a pretty decent chance at walling some stuff. Uh, Samurai Hisui can apply decent offensive pressure. Weezing Galar would probably prove to be a bit of a problem in this game. Uh, Corviknight can be a pretty good defensive backbone as long as uh, Rotom Mo isn't uh, doing too much to it. But Jolteon can always absorb uh, any electric moves that he wants to go for. So there's that. Yeah, I think uh, Rotom looks really good here. Yeah, but he's got, like, Jolt and Swampert to potentially be immunities. If he's, like, because usually if the Rotom's uh, locked in. Uh, I don't think it'll be locked in this game. Just just a feeling. All right. Right. Yeah, looking at these, I mean, Kingston definitely looks like he has the matchup in his favor on paper. Worcester has definitely impressed me this season with his play. Um, is one and one currently. Uh, but has shown flashes of his championship 
form, um, which is, but still having it in Kingston's favor, and I do think Kingston's a better player, I did give it to Kingston. And so with that, we move on to the actual Scizors matchup, Sunnyside Suicunes versus the Pittsburgh Scizors. Ab, I'm going to take it away. All right. So uh, I do really uh, think Sunnyside is going to be trying hard here so he don't, uh, they don't go to 0-3. I think um, a few things uh, come to mind for me. I think Ursaluna looks pretty decent this game for, you know, coming in and getting off big hits. Blastoise is definitely annoying, but, you know, Ogre Pond Wellspring can always uh, come in on Blastoise and, uh, you know, pull off some shenanigans that it wants to do. Uh, I think Volcarona could uh, potentially be threatening this game for uh, the Scizors if he lets it get too out of hand. I don't know if the Clef is going to be unaware or not to try and stop, like, set up from uh, Komo, O, Wellspring, and Volk. I imagine maybe, because I, I don't know if there's too many hazards that the Clefable is going to be wor uh, worrying about, like, unless it's Spikes and Stealth Rex, Komo, O, and Spikes, uh, Ogre Pond, Wellspring. And then, um, Fion. Fion could be pretty fun this game, actually. Uh, I do think maybe something should have safety glasses for Sunnyside, uh, in fear of that spore. Uh, I do think, uh, the, some sort of setup is actually probably likely from Sunnyside, so the Clefable might actually be unaware. I'm not 100% sure. Sand Slash Alola actually looks pretty decent, and I think, uh, I, pretty decent into everything except for Blastoise. So I think Blastoise is pretty important for Pittsburgh, and if Blastoise continues to get chipped, uh, some of the offensive pressure that Sunnyside has could become too much. Although Arcaludon uh, looks pretty well set in this game to get like one or two kills, honestly. Uh, if it's like just a defensive like set that has the coverage, like Flash Cannon, Draco, Body Press, all that stuff. It looks pretty set to do some something devastating actually now that i'm double looking at it but i do believe uh sunnyside's offensive pressure is a little bit better so straight out the gate i can go ahead and tell you uh, this is not a spectria game at least not right now there's an ursaluna right there if that ursaluna gets chipped maybe maybe spectria can do some things uh, i agree that unaware clef is going to be a thing in this game 100 percent. i think it should be anyway i think it's a great check to evoke verona um very, I agree with Blastoise's use. What I do want to point out is the use of Sticky Web this game. Um, Sticky Web in general would help a lot with the Wellspring, a set of Como O, or the Ninetales. I also think it would be really useful for slowing down the Hoopa Unbound. I think it is for sure what you want to do because Iron Boulder comes in here, and I'll be honest, it kind of claims one. Look at Mighty Cleave, I'll look at Close Combat, and tell me what you're switching. Zen Headbutt covers the Como O, and that's about it. I think Overcoat Como needs to come for Amoongus Spore, and if you're going to set up, you need to set up in front of that thing. Clefable, however, can also deal with the Como O, so we need to be wary of that. All okay. right. Yeah, sure. Let's speed it up. Go. Yeah, Lightning all right. With that, we are on to the next matchup of the Vancouver Valiants versus the Abbotsford Agrons. So looking at this, uh, Gouging Fire, Enam, Golden Go, obviously all the all the big things that we've talked about with Vancouver's team before, um, into Abbotsford, Keldeo, Meow, Gliscor. Um, Keldeo's been a claimer of lives recently for that team, uh, saving him multiple games. And um, just overall, uh, uh, between the players, I think Abbotsford pretty handily takes this one with his team. Uh, looking at it, it's definitely in his favor on paper, which is why we gave it pretty handily to Abbotsford, 80-20. Um, yeah, um, so in terms of, like, team matchup, I actually think it's close, or maybe even slightly in Vancouver's favor, maybe, but I just think Abbotsford's way better, and I don't know if Vancouver's fully in it this season, like, I've been talking, I don't know if he's fully in it this season right now, uh, I think he's trying to get more into it, but he was away for, like, two weeks since last Tuesday, and he's been kind of, um, in and out of like paying attention so that's kind of why mine is so high i do think uh like for example tentacruel if you're going to have a keldeo answer tentacruel is one of them uh unless the, of course you know the keldeo could be sub calm mind but uh i don't know if that's uh gonna be able to beat the rest of the team i think uh electrode hisui 
if it's a, I believe he does have Terra Ice, I don't remember. I think that's pretty good in this matchup. And I think a Golden Go is pretty good in this game too. I think uh, some sort of like weird mixed EVs, uh, basically live everything Golden Go can kind of uh, really cook Abbotsford potentially. But um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's probably going to end up being pretty bad if I had to guess. Well, I do want to set the stage for this one. That being that the last time Valiant was 0-2, or what should I say, winless, he went up against Abbotsford with the expectation to get absolutely smashed and ended up beating him. And Abbotsford has shown there are some chinks in the armor this season. He might be 2-0, and but he's definitely left himself more open than he has in previous seasons. Think against Mug where he misclicked, and if Mug had Horn Leech, Mug would have won that game. He's played Mary, and that was a pretty close game. Now, granted, those are both, you know, decent coaches. And the Valiants are definitely on a downward slope, and maybe their their attention is not quite there. But I would not be betting a high, If I were to bet money, I would not be betting a high amount of money on Abbotsford to win the game. Now, I still think Abbotsford's going to win the game. That being said, I think it's still about a about a 70-30 shot in favor of Abbotsford. But if anyone is going to upset Abbotsford, it's the fucking Valiants. I think if the guy gets his head in the game and he realizes that he's better than his record, as he has in the previous seasons, this is very winnable. And I fail to see that he doesn't put up a good fight. Yeah, when Valiance tries, I do think he's pretty good. Like, okay, I know the guy. I think he's pretty good when he, like, puts his his full effort into it. He can. If you look at can... sub bulk up Gapdos... He can make plays. He, he, can, he can get things done here. He can get things done because he has great Keldeo answers. The Glyph score, for once, is not in a commanding position. He has amazing Terra captains and amazing offensive and defensive options. At the end of the day, he does have Golden Ghost, so anything can happen. And the Miascarada is generally handled by Gouging Fire and needs to make a lot of risky reads if it wants to kill the Gapters on a switch. Momentum here is generally going to be in favor of the Valiants. And if Abbotsford wants to play a slower game, then Valiance has ways to punish that. I don't think we should be counting Valiance on it. Will the Valiants pull off the upset, or will Abbotsford show why they are one of the top teams in Unova? Moving on to the last matchup of PBO Week 3 is Sin City versus Luscious. We both have it pretty handedly in Luscious' favor. Um, Sin City has not shown uh, a great promise this season and Unova I believe they're 0-2 lost pretty handedly both weeks um and uh so yeah Luscious has been dominated week one uh lost really really close one week two and I just don't think it's much of a competition here between DoD Roaring Mood Scarm Bliss um Annihilate I just don't think Sin City has many good ways to deal with it if any at all yeah, I've been a big fan of Luscious's Luscious Low Pony's play so far. Uh, not just this season, but last season too. I thought they were probably too good for Kalos last season. Uh, Sin City has been struggling a bit in Unova this season. Um, I played them last week. Brought a bit of an odd team. No Kiram, no Muckalola really. Uh, and without Muckalola, Petron kind of just uh, poisoned everything. And I kind of just switched around a bunch until everything died to Toxic. Um, I think, like, uh, his team build, uh, like, not even necessarily play, I think his team building could be a, a little bit better, and then maybe he'd have a better chance in some of these games. I did like the idea of Upper Hand Greninja against uh, my Kumfei, because it would block my Draining Kiss, I believe. So that was a pretty cool bring. Um... I thought Dragonite probably should have came against me too. It was pretty devastating in the mocks that I did. I think uh, Golurk not terroring uh, turn one was pretty interesting. But um, I it, like this matchup. I think uh, Ring Moon looks pretty devastating. One Dragon Dance, and it's kind of like Night Night. I want to say. Um, I don't know if he has anything that can actually live after one Dragon Dance. Maybe if he's like Scarf Gren, Ice Beam. Or like Makalola, Shuka, something like that. Or if Dragonite still has Marvel Scale. But I think Warring Moon looks pretty devastating this game. I think, you know, Iron Moth can do some pretty big chunks. Since he doesn't really have the backbone to deal with 
Lopani's offensive threats, and he doesn't have the offensive firepower to break through her really strong defensive core of Skarm, DoD, Iblissi. All right, Orange, I mean, you got anything to say? They uh, definitely think they have ways to break through it. I mean, if, actually, if anything, this is the team that will probably find a way to break through it. This being said, Sin City's actually got to put some thought in the build of this week. I know, like, these last two weeks have not been inspirational, and he needs to pick, or they need to pick it up. Uh, it's just not looked pretty. And, I mean, it's very hard to, like, Mary pl sometimes plays a little weird, but, and the roster is slightly strange, and I actually, I don't actually like Mary's roster that much. But it's working, and Sin City's strategy is not. So something needs to change here. I don't know what it is, but something needs to change. Whether it's a mindset or an effort, something has to change. Because what's going on right now is not working. The Kiram, so you have a bunch of stall breakers here. Unironically, you have Greninja, Metagross, Kiram. And then you have a Mew. You have a Mew. The game is winnable. You have the tool. I just think that Mary is showing a lot more of a consistent result than Sin City is right now. Sin City feels like he is just clicking buttons and praying things die. And then when they don't die, he just loses the game. It doesn't look like he has much of a plan. I think Mary will come in with slightly more of a plan. All right. And with that, that is our week three PBO Pick'ems. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace. Have a good rest of your night.